Guys, it's back, it's back, it's back. One of the greatest, no, 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 the greatest Spidey Mobile game of all time. Spider-Man Unlimited. No, 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 not that one, this one. If you were a sucker like me and loved Endless Runners like Temple Run or Subway Surfer, then this was the game for you. And for many people, including myself, the first time they experienced the Spider-Verse. Last week when I was doing some research, my recommended feed showed me Spider-Man Unlimited Mods trailer. And I'm telling you now, you've never seen a grown man giddy harder. This game sent me back to a simpler time when life was just a little slower. Having five minutes before a class to play a game on your phone now just seems like a luxury. So I was excited to have this game playable again, to indulge in some member berries. If you're already sold, hit that like button and jump to the time code here to get a tutorial on how to download and install the game. For the rest of you, join me in reminiscing about one of mobile gaming's hidden gems. Developed by Gameloft at its peak of high profile licensed games, they were tasked by Marvel to develop an endless runner for mobile platforms. In the summer of 2014, Gameloft revealed a trailer for Spider-Man Unlimited at E3 and San Diego Comic Con, sequentially releasing it for all mobile platforms on September 10th. Safe to say, the game did well, as by December 2014, the game had more than 30 million downloads. Critics from various outlets gave praises like, Is both how you do a runner and how you do a superhero game right? Spider-Man Unlimited is a top-notch game on its own. It really makes you feel like Spider-Man. I believe what truly elevated this game was Gameloft's decision not to merely contribute to the oversaturated market of endless runners. Instead, they aim to leverage their rights to one of the best intellectual properties effectively. And who can embody the concept of the endless runner better than the web slinger himself? In the initial stage of development, the game centered around Spider-Man swinging exclusively throughout the city. However, this approach felt one-dimensional and posed challenges in creating engaging boss fights. The developers aspired to encompass all facets of Spider-Man's ability, incorporating web swinging, fighting, wall climbing, free falling into gameplay. Their efforts proved successful, resulting in an addictive gaming experience where Spider-Man moved effortlessly across the New York rooftops. Smooth transitioning from running to swinging, complemented by cinematic cutscenes. Well, as cinematic as mobile games can be. This game lived up to its name, as it's far from limited. It's one of those rare mobile games that had a story, and not just like any story, a freaking Spider-Verse story. I kid you not, this came out before the first issue of Spider-Verse was even released. This game dropped in September 2014, a whole two months before the first issue of Spider-Verse. You're telling me a mobile game launched the Spider-Verse? While it may not be the most optimal way to experience the Spider-Verse story, it's still incredibly surprising that Gameloft got the rights to one of comics' biggest events. This was thanks to product manager Tatiana Nahai, who played a key role in establishing a solid relationship between Gameloft and Marvel Comics. Well, actually, Spider-Man Unlimited made it very easy for me to sell this <laughs> game. <laughs> that it looks like a comic and it feels like a comic. The game has so much references and so much content and the amount of references and hints of things that have occurred in the comics it's um i'm really happy that we were able to really push the brand in a way that uh, would be exciting for Spider-Man fans. Gameloft didn't waste this opportunity to use one of the most unique Spidey plots of all time as they incorporated the story within the gameplay. This element made this endless runner purposeful. Each run didn't just end with a game over screen or how many piss bottles you collected, but a progression of an overarching narrative. And it wasn't just Spider-Verse stories either. Countless events introduced new narratives, environments, and bosses. Gameloft didn't just care about making a game that made money. They cared about making a Spidey game for Spidey fans. Um, for Spider-Man, it was so important to me that we had a spot-on Spider-Man voice. And uh, Marvel was great. They recommended two people, and uh, we got Yuri Lowenthal, and he is fantastic. All right, Gabi, you know the drill. Take off that mask and, hey, did you get a new outfit? You should have won, Yuri. You should have won. Finally, let's talk about what got me to click on the game in the first place. There is actually an unlimited amount of Spider-Man in this game. Do you want your Spider-Man to be more religious? How about a super robot? Or even a woman? There's a spider person for everyone in this game. 
I'm usually not the biggest fan of gacha game mechanics. Gambling for characters I want, but with this game, I wasn't disappointed if I didn't get the spider I wanted, because more than likely, I got a spidey I've never heard before. Like Spider-Man, who's from a What If comic where Aunt May gets bitten by the radioactive spider instead of Peter. She kicks ass and bakes pies, and she's all out of pies. This game also introduced me to some non-Spider people I've never heard of before, like Wraith, who later bullies Peter in Spider-Man 2. All these characters were wrapped up in a pretty solid comic book art style, which kept the look of the game consistent, though some characters didn't get the same love as others. I'm looking at you, Default Miles. Unfortunately, the game was discontinued on March 31st, 2019, sort of unexpectedly. This scratched the head of many fans as the popularity of Spider-Man content was at an all-time high with the release of Homecoming, Spider-Verse, and Marvel Spider-Man. Some fans speculate it might have been due to the over-commercialism as the game started to feel like a money pit towards the end. If you wanted to play more than 5 minutes in a single setting, you had to cash in some sweet, sweet premium currencies. Otherwise, you just had to wait for the, your energy to fill back up making the endless in an endless runner a bit hypocritical. I was so sad to see this game go. There were so many Spideys left to discover and a story that felt inconcluded, but don't worry. Not all heroes wear Spidey suit. As Zen Gaming and his team has resurrected this beloved mobile game like Ben Riley and began updating with new suits and bosses. It's truly amazing to witness a group of people so passionate about a game that they not only find a way to play it again, but also discover a way to make it better. Despite corporate control, Kobe would be proud. I would like to thank the team that allowed me to play a beloved game from my past. I put countless hours into this game and now get to put some more. If you love this game as much as I did, join Zen Gaming's Discord, link below, and show your support. I have a feeling they're gonna make this game even better than it was. And if you're enjoying my web swing through memory lane, please hit that like and subscribe button for more gaming hidden gems. What are some of y'all's favorite discontinued games, and how do you feel about its cancellation? Comment below and let me know. The rest of this video will be a tutorial on how to download and install the game. Unfortunately, if you want to play on mobile, it's just limited to Android OS, so my iPhone homies are shit out of luck. If you have any questions on how to install it, join Zen Gaming's Discord, link below. And until next time, smooth sails and safe travel mates. Press the gameloft.com file.